One of the major improvements NVIDIA brought with the RTX 40 series was a significant improvement to clock speeds over the previous generation. The base clock of the RTX 4090 is 2235MHz, whereas with the RTX 3090 it's 1395MHz, roughly a 60% jump, and that's not even factoring in boost clocks. Higher clocks means more performance, which leads to higher FPS. But what if NVIDIA never managed to achieve the increase in frequency? How much faster would the RTX 40 series be? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. Today, what we're going to be doing is looking at some gaming benchmarks which I conducted using my RTX 4090 with its clock speed significantly reduced. This was a thought which popped up in my mind as I was making my RTX 4090 vs 3090 mega benchmark video and as I was testing the games and I was looking at results, I wondered what if Nvidia never got the clock speed bump with the RTX 40 series which is based on the Ada Lovelace architecture. The previous three generations prior, those being Ampere RTX 30 series, Turing RTX 20 series, and Pascal GTX 10 series, all offered very similar clock speeds, with graphics cards typically having base clocks around 1400 to 1500 MHz, with boost clocks around 1700 MHz. Now in reality, those numbers were quite conservative, and with the way Nvidia's GPU boost technology worked, the cards out of the box would boost much further than that. You could see GPUs under a gaming load easily push past 1800 or 1900 MHz, and if your silicon was really good quality, you'd see around 2 GHz. Most users could actually use a manual tuning software like MSI Afterburner to overclock their cards and almost all of the graphics cards, at least the ones I got my hands on, could reach around 2 GHz or a bit beyond that under a gaming workload. Now when it comes to Ada Lovelace and the RTX 40 series, the GPUs clock much higher than those previous generations. This was something we looked at in my RTX 4090 review. My Asus ROG Strix RTX 3090 hovered around 1850MHz when playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider out of the box, whereas my MSI RTX 4090 Gaming X Trio averaged a smooth 2745MHz out of the box. Boost clocks are what I consider to be more important than base clocks because that is the frequency the card is going to be running at when you're gaming and Depending on how high your card is clocking, that will determine what your performance is going to be like. From my comparison, we're seeing nearly a gigahertz advantage that the RTX 4090 has over the RTX 3090, with my samples that is, and in my recent benchmark video we saw about double the performance in some select titles. So that really got me thinking, what if Nvidia screwed up somewhere during the development of the 40 series, what if they couldn't fab Ada Lovelace on TSMC's 4 nanometer and had to go with an inferior node, or they ran into some power scale issues, preventing them from clocking the 40 series so high, thus resulting in the 4090 attaining a boost clock around 1900 or 2 GHz under a gaming workload, the same as the last few generations. What would the performance improvement be like then, and would it still be considered a good improvement gen on gen? In my recent video, taking a look at the 42 game average, we saw that the 4090 was 64% faster on average, and if we had removed CSGO from the results, it would have been more like over 70% faster on average. To test this, what I did was that I went into MSI Afterburner and I basically applied a negative offset to the core, which would make the RTX 4090 run at around 2 GHz and then benchmarked 18 modern games to see what the performance impact would be like and what the performance difference would be like when compared to the previous generation RTX 3090. The reason why I targeted 2 GHz is because that is around the mark most manual overclocked RTX 30 and 20 series GPUs would land, and when I benchmarked 42 games I had both the RTX 4090 and 3090 overclocked and tuned. With that said, it's time we moved on to the data and looked at some of the benchmark results. I've used the same test system from that last video and same configurations, so you'll find those details in the video description. To start off, I wanted to show you guys the frequency behavior after I had tuned it so it can run at around 2 GHz. I ran Time Spy Extreme's second graphics test on loop for about an hour, and the RTX 4090 averaged a core frequency of around 1990 MHz. You can see it's hovering around that 2 GHz mark with some spikes to 2100 MHz and some dips below 1800 MHz. With the way GPU boost works, the GPU core doesn't sit at a specified frequency, it kind of just does whatever it wants to, but still maintains frequency close to where you had specified it to run at. The behavior is pretty similar to what we saw with the Strix RTX 3090, running the same test in my 4090 review. 
Moving on, and the first game we're going to be taking a look at is Hogwarts Legacy at 4K using ray tracing and DLSS set to quality. So previously, we saw the 4090 average 83 FPS and attain 52 for the 1% lows. With the 4090 running around 2 GHz, we see it drop the average FPS to 73 and 43 for the 1% lows. That's a drop of around 12% for the average FPS, and that's actually not as large as I thought it would be. The 2 GHz 4090 is also 33% faster than the 3090 for the average FPS, and 19% faster for the 1% lows, so that's still a pretty significant difference. The next game we have is A Plague Tale Requiem, and this game in my previous video showed the 4090 absolutely curb stomping the 3090, offering over double the performance when it comes to both the average and 1% lows. Now even with the 4090 running at 2 GHz, we're still looking at around double the performance over the 3090, which is quite impressive, and to be honest, the performance drop we're seeing from when I was running the 4090 at around 3 GHz isn't even that large, we're still looking at a 11% drop for the average FPS and 12% for the 1% lows. In Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, we're seeing that when running the 4090 at 2 GHz, performance drops by 11% for the average FPS and 13% for the 1% lows, so that's a similar drop to what we saw in A Plague Tale Requiem. Now, even with the 4090 running at 2 GHz, it still manages to maintain a pretty significant lead over the 3090, where its 1% lows are neck and neck with the 3090's average FPS, so that's definitely not a bad result. Returnal is another new title which has been ported over to the PC, and it's one of the better ports that I've seen considering what has come out lately. In this title, we do see a pretty significant drop off in performance, 19% for the average FPS and 21% for the 1% lows. You're still getting a pretty decent experience, and again, we're seeing how even at its worst, the 4090 at 2 GHz is still on par with the average FPS from the 3090. Total War Warhammer 3 is up next, and this game is surprisingly fairly GPU bound for an RTS that is. This was another title which showed the 4090 at almost double the performance of the 3090, and so that was an impressive result. With the 4090 handicapped to 2 GHz, we're still seeing a pretty large gap, though now it's only just 38% faster when it comes to the average FPS, and 44% faster for the 1% lows. Forza Horizon 5 showed excellent performance from the RTX 4090, even with basically everything maxed out besides a few post-processing effects turned off. Once we drop the GPU's frequency down to 2 GHz, we see that it still manages to attain excellent performance along with that the gap for the average FPS is 46% when compared to the previous gen BF GPU and is also 34% faster when it comes to the 1% lows. Gears 5 is another title which shows us a pretty significant drop in performance once the 4090 was running at around 2 GHz, but what's also interesting is that, again, even at its worst, this configuration just barely manages to edge out the average FPS figure yielded by the 3090. When we ran both cards normally, sure the difference was quite massive, but even with the 4090 handicap, the performance difference is still very noticeable. In F1 2022, the performance drop from running our 4090 at around 2 GHz is 21%, and for our 1% lows it's 18 percent so about the same with that said 111 fps average and 81 fps for one percent lows isn't what i'd call a bad performance result especially when you're using ultra settings and this game also has a huge performance tax for ray tracing granted we are using dlss set to quality compared to the 3090 however it's still in a different league 48% faster average FPS, and 35% for the 1% lows. Horizon Zero Dawn is a game that I find scales well with hardware, and we can see that here. Going from our 3090 to the 2GHz 4090 yields about 30% higher average FPS, and 22% for the 1% lows. Then going to our OC 4090 configuration, we see performance jumps by 23% for the average FPS, and 19% for the 1% lows. While it's not a linear uplift, I'd consider that to be a pretty decent jump nonetheless. The next game we're going to be taking a look at is control, and here we see the performance loss is quite massive. Don't get me wrong, 111 FPS average and 86 FPS 1% lows isn't terrible, but with the normal overclocked configuration, that gameplay experience would be just a lot better, especially given the type of combat this game has. Now, the 3090 here is doing much worse than both configuration. You can argue that, yeah, it's still, you know, fully playable and acceptable, but both 4090 configs are much better. We're seeing a 39% and 35% jump for the average and 1% lows respectively. Hitman 3 is next, and this is a game that I've been actually playing a lot lately, especially with the recent freelancer update, but just like in F1 2022, this game's performance tax when it comes to ray tracing is quite drastic. When I play this on my OLED rig, I actually use frame generation, since this is a single player game that isn't necessarily fast paced, most of the times you're just in an area just scanning your environment, looking for ways to stealthily kill your target. 
As for performance, this is a title where I'd say if you want to enjoy all that eye candy, then you should be glad that the 4090 got the clock speed jump that it did. The 2GHz configuration has a decent average FPS figure, but you can see 1% lows dip below that 60 FPS mark. That's still noticeably better than the 3090, it has 46% worse average FPS and 38% lower 1% lows. Moving on and we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, one of the first titles to implement ray tracing and here we can see the 4090 even at 2 gigahertz, manages to put up some really decent numbers and do note this was the only title where I enabled ray tracing but didn't actually use any upscaling. While our average FPS drops by around 32%, the performance seen here is still quite good and for a single player title like this one, it's more than enough. The 3090 also did acceptably here as well, though you'd probably be better off enabling DLSS for that GPU or perhaps lowering a couple of settings to get above that 60 FPS mark for the 1% lows. In Metro Exodus, we can see that when we nerf the RTX 4090's clock speed down to around 2 GHz, it still manages to be around 53% faster than the 3090 in this title when it comes to the average FPS, and the margin for the 1% lows is also similar. So gen on gen, I'd still consider that to be a pretty nice improvement. When we let the 4090 stretch its legs with our overclock, it improves that performance by 33% for the average, and just 14% for the 1% lows. So that isn't a great result. This game has one of the best ray tracing implementations I've seen, but that doesn't come without a cost as we can see here. Cyberpunk 2077 with ray tracing is basically the new can it run crisis. You can see even our overclocked 4090 just barely managed to put up some acceptable figures and that's with DLSS on quality mode. Hence this was one of the best titles for Nvidia to market frame generation for, but even though it's a single player title, I probably wouldn't use frame generation in this game and would rather opt to lower settings instead considering the type of combat and the way the pacing is in this game. Now with the 4090 at 2GHz, the performance drop isn't nearly as drastic as I thought it would be and I would consider this to be just passable for a playable experience. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022 is up next, and this was a game that for some reason the 3090 seemed to struggle in at 4K even with normal slash competitive settings. Even with the 4090 nerfed to 2 GHz, it's still miles ahead of the 3090 providing 55% better average FPS and a whopping 146% better 1% lows. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the performance drop between the two 4090 configurations is pretty small. There's a 9% hit to the average FPS and 8% for the 1% lows, therefore despite running at 2 gigahertz it still manages to outperform the 3090 by quite a margin. Far Cry 6 is another Ubisoft title and here the story is very similar to what we saw in Assassin's Creed. The performance delta between the two 4090 configurations is not nearly as large as what we saw from some of those previous titles. This is because even at 4K this is a game which I've noticed is still quite CPU bound so the overclocked 4090 configuration isn't showing its full potential here even with an overclocked 13700K. The last game we're going to be taking a look at is Watch Dogs Legion and here we can see that unlike our last two Ubisoft titles, the performance drop is larger when we nerf the 4090's clock speeds. 19% for the average FPS and 18% for the 1% lows, so a very similar margin for both measured stats. Compared to the 3090, it still manages to attain a 46% and 42% lead respectively. Alright, it's time we looked at our 18 game average and after seeing the results, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Now even though the overclocked 4090 which was running its core clock around 3 gigahertz under load, so that's a 50% jump in clock speed, only manages to be around 22% faster than our 2 gigahertz 4090 on average, and our 1% lows also see a slightly lower margin at 20%. Compared to the RTX 3090, it's 44% faster for the average FPS, and 45% faster when it comes to the 1% lows, so those margins are basically neck and neck. That is actually quite interesting because with the clock speed improvement over these select 18 games, the overclocked 4090 is 76% faster than the 3090. I'm wondering had Nvidia not managed to get the clock speed bump that they did, and the 4090 was only 40-50% to faster on average over the 3090, what the reception would have been like. I'm leaning towards it being mostly positive because most reviewers would have said that oh the 3090 launched at 1499 MSRP and this 4090 is launching at 1599 so that's only a 7% bump in MSRP but you get 
40 to 50 percent better performance and that would still be considered a good improvement gen on gen however this would have been very detrimental towards the rtx 4080 and 4070 ti even right now like with the clock speed bumps they still aren't received very well nvidia would have either been forced to use larger dies for those graphics cards or they would have had to price them at much lower price points because then a 4080 would be performing like a 3090 ti and the 4070 ti would have been close to a 3080 or even lower circling back to the performance improvement against the 3090 it seems like the vast majority of the performance improvement is coming from the fact that the 4090 has 16384 cuda cores versus the 10496 cuda cores that the 3090 has so that's a 56 percent bump in shaders and what we saw was around 45 percent better performance on average so the scaling is kind of close i'm thinking if we had faster cpus we'd probably get that scaling to be one to one but right now that just isn't possible this also just goes to show you that the 4090 is a very efficient gpu and that overclocking becomes pointless after a certain mark you get to a point of diminishing returns like this 2 gigahertz configuration was only drawing like 200 to 220 watts under a gaming workload whereas my overclocked configuration was pushing around 400 watts even more this is why i recommend to almost every 4090 owner you're much better off just running your gpu around 2600 megahertz undervolt it overclock the memory and also add a power limit i have a video about this that i made around the time the 4090 launched so feel free to check it out the performance loss was negligible but you save like 100 watts in power anyways that will do it for this one i thought this was a pretty interesting topic to explore i know it doesn't hold much value to real world performance because nobody's actually going to be running their 4090 at 2 gigahertz i mean you you can if you want if especially if you want to save on power but still this gives us a good idea on what the performance improvement would have been like had nvidia not managed to get the clock speed improvement that they did if you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining then leave a like let me know your thoughts and comments down below be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel such as using my amazon affiliate link and if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.